What we have here is my Atari 2600 cartridge collection. I've been collecting these cartridges since the early 80s. Um, I was probably about nine years old, eight years old when we got our first Atari 2600. And some of these games are the original ones that I had. I've also bought a bunch from friends. Um, I've rated everybody's collections over the years that I know of. Uh, I've also been to a lot of thrift stores, a lot of garage sales, flea markets, eBay, and um, surprisingly I only have 260. There's over 500 games available, but that's digging pretty deep. Pretty much everything I need at this point is going to be between 15, uh, between 10 and 20 dollars each because they're just the very rare ones. So anyways, I wanted to talk today a little bit about the games, and uh, I know there's some YouTube videos out there, so some of this might be repetitive, but um, let's give it a whirl. I think this will also be a part one of a, a part two or three uh, series for Atari, because I'm not going to go into the, to the controllers or the systems at this point. Okay, these are actual Atari branded games made by Atari. And you can tell when you have a real old game if you have a number next to it. So if you like right there, 51, Blackjack. Atari initially um, put numbers next to the games. That was from like the first generation. Then we have the second generation, which are the lowercase ones here. Um, just like Blackjack, except they don't have a number next to them. So Breakout, it's in lowercase, um, lowercase text. And it's actually, these are kind of like a foil type label, okay? Um, very high quality and they held up very well, but it's a foil type label. Sometime around 1980 or 81, Atari changed from this foil lowercase um, convention to uh, colored labels, also with pictures. So there's some really detailed artwork that's on here, okay? That's Night, Night Driver. Let's take a look here. Uh, here's Demons to Diamonds. Okay, so you know a lot of these, depending on, on which version you have, some have pictures and some don't. Um, you know that just kind of puts a little information out there about these. Another thing too is Atari had some some series types games. These right here are Sesame Street games. So this is a, a series or a set of four. Some of the labels on these start to kind of um, start to get really bad after a while and you'll notice this with a lot of the games. I don't know if it's from from people's hands or fingerprints or if it's just the, the adhesive that's kind of coming through but some of these are in really bad shape. Okay, but the labels themselves are okay. It's just that they, you know, the, the um, there's like an oil type um, texture to it. I'm not sure what causes that. So anyways, um, Atari games, the original ones, had an interlock, so you can't actually get to the actual chip. Um, when you put this in the Atari console, um, there's a couple plastic things that poke in here, and then it opens it up, and then the chip is exposed. Um, remember that, because now we're going to go into Activision games. So Activision games, um, these were my favorites from over the years. I, I think Activision had a much better game. They also credited their authors. So when you take a look at a, a game, you're going to see an author. So this one was made by Gary Kitchen. He did Keystone Capers. So Activision games, um, there's no interlock. You just see the edge of the chip. So I think Atari probably felt that you needed to protect those from maybe from moisture or from people touching them or from light but, but the truth be told it didn't really they really didn't need to go to all that effort and even some of the later games that Atari put out did not have the interlock so kind of interesting how they start off with a more expensive cartridge design and then they cheapened it up so these are um, Activision games and um, there's quite a few of those there's even a few more that are in this box down here Activision toward the end of the line um, they got rid of their artwork and they made them a little bit more simple. So here's an Activision, and I think this is probably more toward the end of the line, but very simple. Um, you know, not any artwork or anything, you know, uh, anything snazzy about this cartridge versus the older ones where you had a, a picture and all sorts of other information on it. Um, right here, these are M Network, made by Mattel. And there's a bunch of games here. I always felt that these were substandard. 
I never really cared for these games. I mean, I just didn't think they were all that good. Some of these aren't even two-player. But there's a couple notable ones in here. Um, that one right there is Kool-Aid Man. And you got Bump and Jump. And it looks like towards the end of the line, they used white labels. So if you have a white label M Network game, that's because it uh, was probably one that was more toward the end. Um, these also have like a little adapter thing that's been put on them. So they work fine on the Atari, but I presume this is the size of an Intellivision game, so they could use the same housing for Intellivision or for Atari. Okay, um, we start getting into some of the other brands. Here's 20th Century Fox. Here's MASH. They did kind of a bad job on this. Look at this. Some of these labels don't even tell you what the game is. You actually have to turn the game over to see it, so it's kind of a bad design. But there's Crips of Chaos, and those are 20th Century Fox. Um, lots of companies um, started making games back in the day. This here, these are Sega, okay? Subscan by Sega. You can usually tell by the form factor of the cartridge. So all the ones that have these little ridges on the side here are Sega games. So we have Sega here. Um, we also have this company here called Apollo. Apollo made a bunch of games too. And one of my favorites, which is a crazy goofy game, but it's called Lost Luggage. Okay, I remember buying this one at a uh, Dominic's back when they had a video section at the front of the store. But anyways, there's, uh, these are Apollo games, and those also have exposed chips. Um, this is the last iteration of Atari 2600s, or games made by Atari proper. So when we took a look at the ones over here, these are the most newest ones. These were put out in the mid to late 80s, 1987. Look at that. And you'll see those have exposed chips. So as I said, um, Atari started off with a much nicer design, and then they, they got rid of it later on because you really don't need to protect the chip and the, the, the connectors. Over here, let's see, these gray ones are CBS Electronics. I have no idea if CBS has anything to do with uh, CBS TV. Uh, my guess is there's some tie in there, but CBS Video Games, so there's some right here. Um, here's another company called US Games. They made a bunch of games as well. These cartridges have some odd notches on the end, end of them. I'm not sure why, but uh, they work and it's all that matters. Okay. Here's another one called Mythicon. This is a company called Mythicon. Never even really heard of them, but I have two games by Mythicon. Firefly and then Sorcerer. Here's another uh, company. This is called Data Age. Okay, these may not come out as well because they're silver on, cam on camera here, but these I have in here because the labels are starting to come off on them, so I want to protect them a little bit more. Um, there's Data Age, and it's interesting, this one has a Best Buy sticker, so I'm, I'm sure I bought this at a Best Buy somewhere when uh, they must have been selling games, which it just seems strange that Best Buy would be selling Atari games, but they did at one point. Um, there are a couple exclusive games that were for the Sears version of the Atari, because Sears made a version called Telegames, and actually it was made by Atari, but it just had the Sears branding. And every game that came out for the Atari, at least the first ones, had a counterpart with the Sears name, and they were a little bit different. So, like, poker might be called cards, or, you know, instead of uh, um, 3D tic-tac-toe, it may just be called tic-tac-toe. So there were counterparts. But these are actual exclusives, which did not have an Atari counterpart. So they're made by Atari, but only for, they were only um, were available for telegames. So it's called Stellar Track and steeplechase. A little bit of information there. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Here are more Atari branded games. Then we get into Coleco. And Coleco, I think, did a pretty bad job as well. Um, they could have done a lot better with a lot of these games. And a good example is Donkey Kong. If you've ever played Donkey Kong on the Atari, it is just an absolutely horrendous 
rendition. Kind of reminds me of what Pac-Man was when, when Atari put Pac-Man out. And and I get it. I know that, that the graphics aren't great and you can only do so much, but I mean, they didn't even make it two players. So it really was, was just a poor uh, poor effort and really, bit, really too fast to market in my opinion. Okay, here's another company here, and this is called US Games. And um, these are a couple different form factors. This one has kind of a ridge in it, but uh, there's a game called Picnic, but US Games. And then Imagic. I personally think Imagic is one of the best um, Atari games, or the companies. I like Imagic just as much as I liked um, Activision. I thought a lot of these games were, were really well thought out. And you'll see with a magic, some of these have artwork on them, some of them just have silver foil. And you'll know um, the older ones only had foil on them, so there's a couple different versions. Like here, this is an older one because it only doesn't have a picture, but depending on when you, you bought your game or where it came from, some may or may not have, um, have artwork. Actually, that, that's the one I was just looking at, but here's Firefighter. That was a, a really good game, too, as I recall. Very, very good. I, I think they did a good job, uh, Magic did. Um, we come over here, and here is Parker Brothers. Parker Brothers I, I was actually pretty impressed with. Um, they did a good job, and Parker Brothers is best known for Frogger. Um, everyone knows Frogger, and that one, they all have exposed chips. Um, you know, but uh, they had a bunch of different Star Wars. There's Star Wars, the arcade game. Then we have Star Wars, The Empire Stri Strikes Back. And then we have Star Wars, Return of the Jedi. So, um, had a number of different games here. And, you know, these were all licensed, I'm sure. So there were probably fees that had to be paid to, to be able to use the names and such. Here's an oddball company here called Spectravision. Okay, this is a game called Tapeworm, and this has a, it doesn't have an interlock, but it has a little spring type thing that has a plastic thing that covers the actual edge of the PCB board or the chip. But anyways, that's another one right there, uh, SpectraVision. So, it's just a little sampling of Atari games. Um, I do like to play these, they are fun. Here's um, some ones that are boxed that have never been opened. And boy, I wish I kept the boxes for all my games. These are really neat. This is um, one of my favorite games, Adventure. And you take a look here, and it usually you, you, you destroy the box opening it because you're so excited to get to the game. Here's one here, Hunt and Score. That one's sealed. Um, here's another one, Crawl. This is at the end of the line for Atari. Um, I'm not sure where I got this, but I bought it for $7 somewhere. I don't know if I can get a, a year on when that was made, but these are, this is from actually 1988. 88, so this was the end of the line. Okay, Taz. So, anyways, that's my Atari collection. If you uh, have any questions, please go ahead and, and uh, post them on YouTube. But uh, enjoy discussion on these. Also, uh, I'm looking to collect things that uh, games that are not in here. So if you happen to be watching this and you have a game that I don't have, uh, send me a message. Thanks for watching.